Cabin Artists presents The Stephen James Wiley Show Molly Allen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, what a blessing. <laughs> have never been a blessing to anyone oh. <laughs> it's not ever oh that molly allen what a blessing <laughs> i think it's been said more than once i, I say it often so. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> well okay. that's not the way i was going to start it but i like it okay i like it so first question i have for you what is the most money you have ever won at a slot machine eleven thousand dollars and was this recent yes Okay, so here's the thing. I I call it my sport. It is not a habit. It is not an addiction. <laughs> no, sir. It is a hobby and or sport, as I like to go. So, um, and actually, it was $11,000 in one day over two different slot machines. Wow. So, yeah, it was pretty exciting. I hit a hand. They call the hand pay. If you win over $1,200, you have to get hand paid out. That in, happened. In cash. In cash or check. Okay. So I take the cash. I'm like, this is great. The very next slot machine I go to, I'm $50 in. Boom. It's like, I think that one was uh, $10,000. So, wow. yeah, it was great. Back to back. And I had never had that happen before. So that one I got to check. But, you know, I have them take taxes out. So I cleared like eight grand for the day. That's amazing. Yeah. Ask me the last time that I asked me how Vegas went. How did Vegas Not go? well, Steve. <laughs> Not well. Not every game is a winning game. No. It's a dangerous sport I play. So at the end of the year, I'll get a thing called a win-loss report. Because I've paid in taxes, like 22% of everything. I won five right. jackpots this year. Wow. Yeah. It's been a good year. <laughs> good year. A lot of winning. It is a lot of winning. There's also a lot of losing. We who, don't talk about the losing. Who gives you the win-loss report? The casino. So, you know, you put your loyalty card in every time you play. Of course. And then, then they record kind of how much you're winning and losing. And then based on, and also, I, I think, somebody told me if you get your money out there at their like at their ATM, yeah. um, not only do you get to pay $3 to do that, uh, you also, that that counts. Like, you can you can show on your bank records, look how much I spent there. Look how many times I got money out. Even though I won, it can go against... I'll probably get some money back at the end of the year. I've overpaid. Wow. Yeah. That's detailed. It's been a good year. I'm it's so been happy a really for good you. Year. Thanks. What? <laughs> it's a really good sport I play. And it's not over yet. And it's not an addiction. Not and at all. And it's not a habit. It's a hobby and it's a sport. <laughs> is there is there a theme to like the machine that you ran with, or was it just? I got a gut. I'm going over here. You know, sometimes I will tell you a quick story. Mm -hmm. uh, I was at a machine uh, just recently and there were three in a bank and I was playing along and I, my money dwindled down. But I knew that there are things like that will collect and then pretty soon it bursts and then you're going to get this bonus situation. Well, I knew it was coming close. So I had to go get my money. So I went and go, got more money and I come back and the lady at the end, who's the third person, she's getting up to leave. And as I go to sit back down at my same spot, she literally goes, ah, 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 ah. and I said, what? She goes, I was about to sit there. I said, you were about to sit here? <laughs> okay. And I just walked away because I thought that's the karma. If I pushed it and said, no, I'm sitting here. And I thought, you know, I should go to her spot and win at her thing. It's but, true. Yeah. So I like all different kinds, all different, okay. I'm equal opportunity. And I, it, is it a gut feeling then? Yeah. It's a good, and it's also what's fun to watch, like what okay. the themes that you like. You have to have like the music, and then you have to know which ones. Like they have this rooster one, and as I said to my friend, it's the only thing I know to get back to good. Like if I'm way down, I'll go to the rooster machine, and three eggs pop down. It's a whole thing for non gamblers. I mean, <laughs> I love it. But, well, yeah. I was there, and I noticed they're immersive machines. Yes, like the old school is like the things spinning yeah and or even the digital ones but these are eight feet oh, tall yeah. mm -hmm. with graphics and things going on and the seats rumble when you get a bonus are you kidding? oh the seats rumble they rumble hard steve they're so good <laughs> when you get a rumbler you know something good's gonna happen <laughs> and then there's 3d ones where it'll come out at you 
Oh, yeah, they've wow. got everything. But, you know, what I've noticed is that you're not going to find anything more interesting in Vegas than you do here locally. We have all the good slot machines. So there's really no reason for me to be in Vegas anymore unless there's a show or something. Really? Yes, because we have we have hotel. We have, please, I yeah. could be a spokesperson. I don't work for the casinos, but, God, I wish I did. You should. Um, but we have concerts that come. We have hotel, spa. Great machines, yeah. all the table games. What else do you want? Why go to Vegas? That's an interesting. I've always thought that because there's casinos everywhere now. Like yes, the uh, you know the Indian casinos or native. I don't know what they call them. Native American casinos. Yeah, the tribe casinos. The tribe casinos. Yes, there. It used to be Vegas was cool because it's the only place you yeah. could go, mm -hmm. or maybe those little gas stations in Montana. Yeah, but um, we're so lucky here. It's kind of cool. <laughs> Lucky. Or not. Well, then you got the Coeur d'Alene Casino. They have a big hotel. They don't have table games, but I don't care about that. Right, right. Um, and they got the RV park. You can park it. I mean, it's just, it's just the best time. In fact, when we landed, it was funny because we were so done with Vegas. We were in Vegas for two days. Really? I lost my ass. <laughs> And I just wanted to come home to my home casinos, my home sporting. I said, I don't, I'm not doing any more away games. Like, <laughs> I'm not going on the road anymore. So the first thing we see in the Spokane airport is the sign that says, <laughs> two miles from Las Vegas style gambling. And I said, no, leave me alone. I'm done with you. I needed to take a break. So That's I took good. like a two day break and then I was back at it. You're back. And the mini Winnie is a big part of your routine is you go camp even though it's local you take your sometimes camper. i do yes i do i spend a weekend and set up shop uh-huh so what you can do seriously like if like i took the kids uh, my grandson is yeah. 10 and his cousin is 10 so we go out there uh we are able to rent a golf cart to go back and forth from the rv park to the hotel hotel get the kids quest they stay in there there's a movie theater there's a pizza place there's a spa there's a pool indoor and outdoor it's got everything that's amazing. My, we've spent whole weekends out there. I love it. It's really and fun. We've always talked about me joining you, and I haven't uh -huh. yet. Um, but I'm I'm actually trying to get my lungs ready so I can smoke with you, <laughs> and, <laughs> and and we can just. You don't know have to smoke. It would be fun if you did. <laughs> <laughs> I just blew my levels there. Sorry, everybody. Uh, no, yes. you don't. I mean, we could also, and I'd be open for this. We could go to the non-smoking area. Get our sodas. There there's at the one. There's a huge non-smoking area. The thing about it is this: that it, one of two things are going to happen. Let's just say you bring a hundred dollars, right? And I guide you through the casino. Uh, one of two things will happen: you'll lose your hundred dollars, and you will respect me less and really not understand who I am at all. <laughs> or you'll, God forbid, win something, Which and then awesome. you'll be hooked forever. You yes. think you'll walk away? You think? You'll be like, oh, I won $5,000. I'm never doing this again. Yay, I can fund my next movie. <laughs> oh, no, you'll be back. You'll be back. That's what happened to me. I won $1,400 on a cruise. And, and that's how it started? Yep. Mm -hmm. How long ago was this? A long time ago, Steve. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, speaking of not long ago. Yes. Um, I thought I should dive into how we became friends. Mm-hmm. Um, because we, I was trying to actually run the numbers because it feels like I've known you a very long time. Yeah. And yet, I think we met in, in 2020? We met um, three weeks before the shutdown. It was, was it. your brother-in-law. It's your brother-in-law's yeah. play. Yes. Your sister was there, our friend Heather. Yep. And I was meeting Heather and Mary. And then she said, oh, Jillian's bringing her brother. And I don't think you've ever met him. And we started talking about podcasts. Yes, that was it. Yep. And I came over to look at your studio. I was supposed to start a podcast from work. And then the world shut down. And then we started writing screenplays. That was it. And mm -hmm. we took full advantage. I was we thinking did. about the pandemic because we were very productive during the pandemic. Oh, so productive. Incredible. And I thought, you know, because people were like, man, we lived through the pandemic. And I was thinking about it. And I thought, I just watched a lot of TV and wrote a lot of movies. Yeah. And um, drank too much. Mm -hmm. Um. And oh, that... I aged quite a bit. I was looking at the beginning of pandemic time, Serious? like when I was doing, yeah, when I was doing like live Facebook stuff. And then <laughs> <laughs> I think I also had a lot of Botox in me when we shut down and then I couldn't get any more. And it's just, went <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any now. This is like completely no Botox. You never went back? No, they did some fillers on me, and I, I that was like 20 at the end of 2020 when she opened back up. And then, like, 
I looked like, hey, I looked weird. I would not have known. I'd rather age than like have to deal with that. But, um, uh, but the, um, I was like, oh, you read, you know why we got so much done? (laughs) They shut the casinos down. That was it. (laughs) You didn't have an option. Hello. Well, what they did, I think they were shut down. Well, and, and even though they were open, I uh, even I didn't go back. I took a break because I didn't know what this COVID thing was going to be like. Right. And w- there was masks and it was like they first tried to do where you only could have a few people. You know, they tried to limit it. But the nice thing is they put all these barriers up in between. So even now you have a plastic thing in between you and the next person and on uh-huh. a lot of the machines, which I like. So it's like you- your little booth of... Yeah, it's like your little cone of silence. That's nice. Yeah. A little more privacy. A little more privacy. Outstanding. Mm-hmm. So so for those who don't know, Molly Allen and I, Steve Wiley, uh, we write scripts together, feature mm-hmm. films, um, short films. And um, Molly has written a lot of stage plays, award-winning stage plays. Uh, they are award-winning. Yeah. Hell yes. And so um, organically, we, during that time, decided to start writing together and took mm-hmm. full advantage of the weirdness of the whole thing and we're very productive and Mm -hmm. since the world has reopened up and uh we haven't done anything (laughs) (laughs) she's back at the casino and i'm just alone in my basement it's my hobby (laughs) (laughs) you know what it is i've always felt this way about writing because i've been writing for years and i've written through divorces to kind of you know, work through that, which is when I wrote my last two plays during that time. And it was sort of an escape. And then I had my grandson at the house who was just a baby. So I was home a lot. And then that was my entertainment to sort of write and work things out. Um, but I've always said that if if it hurts or I don't feel like doing it, I'm not going to do it because it's always it has truly been a hobby of writing. Yeah. And so when we were during the pandemic, we were really good at setting up goals for ourselves and I think we wrote some really good scripts but then the reality of life sets in and you don't get to just sell it to somebody no they read it and they pat you on the head and they say but then to top it off you watch things and you go well wait our shows our script is better than that I know that right not that we don't need to fix things it's not that it's perfect but it is better than a lot of stuff that's out there. So then you think, well, what's the game? Then you have to know somebody who knows somebody. And that's what that's I've always it. avoided. And so it's frustrating. It should just be like, well, that's the difference with theater. With theater, if you have a good project, you get to work on it because you do it yourself. You're not depending on mm-hmm. a bunch of money. You're not depending on a producer, right? You know, yeah. all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah. And you've been fortunate to do a, a few things that have yeah. – one went to the national – was it? Well, we went to competition and then lost. Okay. Thanks for bringing it up. Sorry, didn't mean to go there. No, I had a playwright. I had, at the playwrights, I won the crowd, the crowd favorite. That was Because, see, I mostly write comedies. Yeah. It's never going to win any big awards. It always, the crowd loves it. Um, but when we went to the festival, in fact, this is a kind of funny story. So I think there were eight shows total at the festival. Uh, one gets to advance. So out of the eight, one gets disqualified because it they are didn't put their setup in time. Uh, so then that they would have won probably. So instead, now we're down to seven. They pick a, another play, and that they can't go because they're funding or whatever. So then they go, okay, well we're going to pick another play. So they pick another play, and they went through three different plays that were eligible that could not go till they found one, and they still didn't ask us to go to the next <laughs> level. <laughs> Even though the crowd loved it. We won best moment of the festival. We won acting awards. We won um, every all these things. And yet, because it was a comedy, we and don't get to be important. You think it was because it was a comedy. The yeah. other ones that were picked were more serious yes. or yeah. heavy. Yeah. That's a shame, I isn't it? I think so. Yeah, it is. And maybe it's because they just should have a separate comedy festival for theater. I don't think theater should be a competition. And it was a huge mistake to go do that because, and my friends told me that, and, but I hadn't experienced it. And so you have to cut it down to an hour and then you have to build your set in a certain amount of time and then, and then take it apart. What does that have to do with good theater? Being able to set up a set in 10 right. minutes like that. It's a, I shouldn't have 
really done that. The festivals are different, like the Playwright Festival. That's just a showcase type thing. Right. But as far as competition, and then who are the judges? Like, who, who, what do they know? Well, it's all subjective. Yeah. But speaking of subjective things that we're very happy about. This, this is when judges are this right. This is when they were very correct. This is when they're right. We wrote a short film called Good Neighbors. Um, it's about a mother and son observing a topless sunbather, <laughs> and they believe she might be dead. Mm-hmm. And it's a, a nine and a half minute short film. And uh, our friend Juan Moss directed it. And very lucky he saw something in what we wrote and got excited to spearhead it. Because um, I had never produced anything. And we both were producers on it. And, and mm-hmm. uh, along with Jennifer Gatz and then Don Hamilton did cinematography. It was, it was really fun. We had a great cast. Mm-hmm. And I would just, we just, well... It was supposed to be yesterday, but now it's the 20th. Um, We have one more festival I'm waiting to hear back from. We submitted to 23 festivals since last October. Um, The Jelly Fest is what we're waiting for. Um, (laughs) It's probably the most prestigious one we submitted to, and um, I'm really holding out hope. But we'll wait to hear from that on the 20th. But out of 23... And this is really impressive. I didn't realize actually how impressive it is. We were accepted into nine total festivals. I thought it was 10, but actually I'm doubling one up. And out of the nine, we won, uh, here I have the list here. We won Best Short Comedy Award in the Nashville Independent Filmmakers Festival. In the X Film Festival, we won Best Short Comedy and Best Acting Duo for Danny Anderson oh, and yeah. Deborah Marlowe. Who they were funny. Really funny. And then uh, we were semi-finalists at the Vancouver Independent Movie Maker Awards, Sacramento Independent Film Festival, Art House Festival of Beverly Hills, the Hamburg Indie Film Festival. We're global. Really? We are global. Wow. Oakland Film Festival and Chicago Filmmaker Festivals. We were official selections. Mm-hmm. And... Also at the Minneapolis St. Paul International Film Festival, we were official selection. And I didn't understand that just being an official selection is kind of a miracle. Wow. Because like Minneapolis, or or for example, Florida, we didn't get into the Florida Film Festival. Uh Uh-huh, they suck. But yeah, and that was why. Yeah, it's Um, Florida. (laughs) Duh. But they, and San Diego, we thought we had an in in San Diego, didn't give us anything. Boo. But they sent a thing that gave me perspective. They said, just so you're aware, we received over 2,000 film submissions and we only have 150 slots oh. we can fill. And so don't be offended. It's this, And they were very honest. Like, this is a completely subjective mm-hmm. venue and it is what it is and you shouldn't be discouraged and, you know, trying to make everyone's... We're all artists and so sensitive. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was... It really made me feel proud of everyone that we worked with and well, all the work yeah. we did. Because that actually means something. We did something cool. When we were at the Spokane Comedy Film Festival here. Oh, the Garland one. Yeah. They saved ours for last, which was flattering, but also late at night. So yes. I didn't make it I quite wasn't that. I for that part either. Yes. But I think when when you see what other people are doing and uh, and and you can really, like, it does give you perspective. It's like, wow, they are really doing great stuff or... Well, we did it better than they did it, yes. or at least ours looks better. Whatever it, we or we we were competitive. If it, yes. even though art's not a competition, but we our work was quality on par with the yeah. best stuff out there, yeah. and that's what it tells me. Like our writing, yeah, it was good, and it means all the other things. Because it's easy to feel discouraged. I don't know about you, but like yeah. when we've sent our scripts off. I mean, if we wrote a sequel to the movie Urban Cowboy, yeah, and fun fact. Uh, Molly's family is the Travolta family. Her mother is Ellen Travolta. Her uncle is John Travolta. Lovely, lovely people. And Urban Cowboy is her favorite movie. And it's a wonderful film that talks about uh, bull riding and domestic violence. Um, <laughs> when you put it like that, it doesn't sound that much fun at all. No, it's a, gr- it's a great movie. And we and Molly had always wanted to write a sequel, so we wrote a sequel for that. Um, very passionately. Like, we did a... We did a kick-ass job. That is a top-notch script. It's Sorry, but it is. Script. It's a great movie. Yeah, and we table-read it, and... Um, it's we, a great movie. We got to submit it. And so when you get rejected, essentially, which is what happened to us, 
with and other things we've written were were sent back um, with friendly notes. Um, it can be discouraging, and this to me was very affirming to our work, to mm -hmm. what we've done, and to everyone who worked on it. I mean, from Juan to Don Hamilton, and yeah. all the actors were so friggin' awesome. Yeah. Um, so I'm very proud of that, and and I'm gonna, you know, I'm taking some time right now to I'm gonna have Juan come on the show as well, and because mm -hmm. I want to celebrate it. Honestly, it's a great thing we did, and we should be very proud of it. The thing is, with Urban Cowboy, I wanted to see that movie. Me too. That was the thing. I didn't even care if it was us that wrote it. or But once we wrote it, I was like, well, now I want to see that. And John loved it. Yes. He read it, and he loved it. John Travolta liked our... He, yes. yes. He loved it. He thought it was lovely. Yeah. And, and I think that his... I think his... People did. The word we got was that they were working on something else on the an TV side, an episodic. Um, and and just because I love the movie doesn't mean, you know, that it needs a sequel or whatever. I just, I fell in love with the characters and I really yeah. wanted to see it. And one thing I did think of, because I do want to use this show as a venue to highlight anything creative I do, you do, mm -hmm. whatever is I would think it'd be fun to table read some of our scripts and put and have it yeah. like my next short film that I've written and Molly's going to be producing and acting in. Um, uh, I'm going to do a table read on, on the show so people can see what's coming. I think it's a yeah. fun way to include people in the process, but mm -hmm. that table read so well. Yes. Um, so did our Hallmark movie, by the way. It did. We have so many good things. We did. We wrote a Hallmark mm -hmm. movie for her mom, Ellen, who is actually just, she's about to go on her second one or just ra she did her second one yeah it's gonna air it'll air this saturday after thanksgiving oh really mm -hmm. sweet and it's a good it, those it's are actually great. really good yeah movies call out the holly too and we didn't write that but no we wrote a really good one though we did write what it. was the name of our lake city lake city something. lake town uh, lake town taking a chance on christmas yeah <laughs> awesome awesome <laughs> And if you could read some of our outtakes, that's fun too. <laughs> we like to put little things in just to make sure the other one's reading, <laughs> actually reading. Yes. And one of one of them was that it was like, and little Johnny, his mom took him out back and beat the crap out of him until he. And I was no. like, what? No. no, what? It was just so that you knew I was reading the directions. Yeah, because I wasn't sure Molly was reading all the stuff when I would send her my work. <laughs> I always so read it. <laughs> I called it the proofer, and that was the one. It was actually a mother who threw her daughter into traffic. That's right. That's and, right. And she never commented on it, and I knew she didn't read it. And, and oh. I caught her. So it worked. The proofer worked. But, it but okay. usually I caught him. You, I caught all the other yeah. ones. And then we almost accidentally sent my mom one that was horrible. Yes. That, that was some, really bad about taking someone in earnest. Yes. The kiss would get a little out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> but... It was a great, you know what, though? It was the best way to spend a pandemic being creative, making a new friend, yeah. having having something to do each day, and then also the people who would come on Zoom and read it with us. It was a great, I mean, we got Absolutely. a lot done. Absolutely. It and, was good. And I want to do more of it. You know, as and yeah. I'm excited to, I have another short, we're, gonna, we're looking at January now, mm -hmm. um, and then... I had written another one that we were going to do in May. We didn't. And I have some friends in L.A. who might want to. Uh, Excellent. We'll see. It's long shot. No stress. Let it roll. But, um, man, this is fun. Isn't it? I'm sorry for the audio issues. We've peaked levels a couple times. I actually turned it down a little. So if you notice that, I loud. apologize. We tend to laugh and enjoy each other's company. <laughs> Um, Maybe we should laugh like this. <laughs> oh, Stephen. Oh, Stephen. <laughs> I, too, I too found that amusing. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> well, actually, I had a question about uh, uh, growing up in uh, L.A. Because you grew up while your mom was on TV, Yes, right? I did. And what, heyday. What show was she on that was the big one? It was Charles in Charge? Yeah, well, she was on, she started doing episodes. Like, she was on uh, What's Happening. She was on every uh, Love Boat, all of those. Three's Company. Mm -hmm. um, she was Horshack's mom on ha on Welcome Back, Cotter. They did a spinoff. Oh. So she played Horshack's mom. Then she played uh, Chachi's mom on Happy Days. Scott Baio. Yep. yep. And then they did a spinoff, Joni Loves Chachi. 
And then later she became uh, Charles's mom on Charles in Charge. That was and it. that was the one. And then she also did a stint on General Hospital when I was a kid, plus commercials here and there or a film here and there. You know, she would yeah. do other things. But the, the majority of when I was sort of in high school uh, was the Charles, it was the happy days into the Charles in Charge. So, and when I went away to college, I think she was still doing Charles in Charge. And was that for you? Were you on set and do a part of that world or were you more separate from it you were into work with her or you know when i was a kid i would go i would go to the tapings a lot that was a lot of fun on sitcoms if she was doing an hour-long episode never i almost never she did one movie that filmed at magic mountain and so i went with her then because i could go play in the park while she was filming Mm -hmm. um other than that i you know we would go for filming night sometimes like if i were sick or something she'd just bring me to work with her i knew all the people um, but I thought that show business was about the dumbest business anyone could go into. I thought it was ridiculous. I got my first job at 14 and I've been working ever since. And so when I would watch my parents sit there waiting for their agent to call, to give them permission to go to an audition that maybe they'd then get permission to go do a job. I thought, well, go fill out an application and work at the mall. Like, what are you doing? What? Do you, it just didn't even make sense to me. I thought it was yeah. so stupid. And some of their friends, my parents were never this way, but some of their friends were so self-centered. It was all about, well, you know, I got this part and I worked with so-and-so and so-and-so and I was like bored of it. So I steered clear till I moved away and then I started doing theater and I fell in love with theater. Very, very different. Um, very different. But growing up in LA with my mom being Chachi's mom and John Travolta being my uncle was awesome. I bet. It was fun. Yeah. Where did you move away to that you got involved in theater that kind of lit you up? Orlando. Okay. So I saw, uh, it was the first time, it was during my first marriage. Yeah, there's been three. Um, <laughs> where I didn't have to work. And so I found an ad and it, they were doing a Brady Bunch spoof. Now, Brady Bunch is my all-time favorite show. Uh, yeah. All-time. In fact, did I tell you the gift that I received the other night? There was an episode, Steve, I had never seen it. Or if I had, I had seen it one time. How is that possible? I don't know. It was it was maybe I had seen it one time, but I mean, I didn't know the dialogue verbatim like I usually do. I was just stunned. I even said to the dog, I was like, I don't know what's next. I don't know what's going to happen here. It was crazy. They were protesting a building. Oh, it was the best. Anyway, so there was an ad. It was a place called Manhattan South. It was a theater in Orlando. And they needed, uh, they were auditioning for this thing called the Brady Bunch Uncensored. And I thought, well, I'll go check it out. Well, I auditioned for Marsha. And I did a good job. But he said, look, I was so excited. I was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. And he said, I can't afford to make you look like Marsha. You did a nice job. He said, but would you be my assistant director? Wow. I said, are you kidding me? Yes, of course I will. Well, then Marsha couldn't do all the shows, so they let me have two of the nights every weekend, and I went and bought a $20 wig, and I did my Marsha. <laughs> and Seriously? things like, Jan, I can't help it if the boys don't find you attractive. <laughs> um, so then the thing that was crazy is this was in the early 90s. Then they came out with that movie. And that was done. I auditioned for that movie, the part of the lesbian girl who loves Marsha. I auditioned for that part. Really? They, t- I think they stole those those ideas from my friends who wrote the the Brady Bunch Uncensored. I really do. Then we did Brady Bunch, um, uh, the Revenge of Jan, and I played Alice in that one. Hey, really? kid, do you want some cookies? <laughs> yeah. And then I wrote one. It was uh, Mommy Dearest. It was a um, a very Brady Christmas. And Jan's going to throw herself off the bridge. And Mommy Dearest comes and she's the guardian angel. So when Jan tells her she wants to kill herself, they keep looking back to see if really she should stay alive. And everything that they look back on, it's better that Jan's not there. It's like, <laughs> like well, we've got five seats left on the bus for the kids. And the kids are like, aren't you glad we don't have a sibling? That would be awful. <laughs> and so Jan's like, gee, Mommy Dearest, I think they are better off without me. And finally, Mommy Dearest says, oh, Jan, why don't you just jump? <laughs> she tells her to jump off the bridge. 
Does she jump? I can't remember how I ended it. I think she finally goes home for Christmas. So those were all. That's how I fell in love with theater. Was all we did a Gilligan's Island one. It was all just hilarious. Just you know, Greg and Marsha are banging each other, and and Alice is into bondage. It was like all kinds of crazy. It was just very funny. Very this is funny. all in Orlando. All in Orlando in a year. I did four or five shows. That's incredible. And then when I moved to Nashville, there wasn't really a lot of theater. I did some improv. I was so bad at it. Oh, my God. I was bad at improv. Really? Horrible. Horrible at it. And we would do it in these little bars. It was awful. And so then when I moved, uh, then I tried to make my way in Los Angeles again. Then I ended up back up here in Spokane doing theater, which is how I ended up back here and then got the radio job. Okay. So I love doing theater. I'm not a big one on the films and stuff it's just not i like writing films that's fine but performing wise i really like to be on stage it's fun what about improv beat you like i just sucked at it i don't know i it doesn't strike me that you i've always thought i could do that but i'm also super scared of it same as stand-up comedy like i've always thought i could do that but i'm terrified and i'm a coward i guess I think if I had to pick one, I'd probably rather do stand-up comedy. Here's here's why. You're relying on other people. And there are a whole bunch of rules to improv that you don't know about. That's true. And that's what got me. It was it, I did improv sports, I think it was called. Something sports. Anyway, uh, it just – you you were restricted. Uh, but then they had, th- like, how you could come up with stuff. It was just – I just didn't like – maybe I didn't have a, a good teacher. Maybe I didn't have a good director. I don't know. But I found it really terrifying. Yeah, it sounds terrifying. Yeah. To me. That was Nashville. That was Nashville. And then also here I had my own uh, Molly Works LLC. I'm not sure if you knew about that, Steve. I did not. Where I wrote and uh, directed um, Murder Mysteries. And we would do, they were musicals mostly. And corporations would hire us to do them. No way. Here in Spokane. And at the time I paid my actors $150 each for the night. And they were like, that was a lot of money. Yeah. This is 20, you know, 25 years ago, 23 years ago. And uh, so then, but then we got fired <laughs> because, well, one time we got fired. So we put this thing together. We would go talk to a group. Like, let's say you own a company. And they said, like, for our, our Christmas party, we're going to do a murder mystery for our ed. It's going to be at the Davenport. So here who here's a bunch of inside jokes you guys can use. So then we'd have our characters and we'd do songs and stuff. Somebody would get murdered. We'd haul them off, and then the guests had to guess who it was that killed them. And whoever got it right won a big prize. Clever. That was So, but the the people had to give us information. And the Banner Bank people, they had a guy working there, and he gave us a lot of information about his boss and about this new uniting thing that they were all doing or whatever. So we write it, and I left. I was out of town. And the crew goes to do it, and about 20 minutes in, they get pulled aside, and they're like, you need to leave now. The boss was furious. He what? He did not like it. So so we just we got paid <laughs> the money, and then they just said, go home. And never happened again? Well, no, that, that was – I think that guy got we, – we got hired a few more times, but okay. it kind of ran its course, like that whole thing. That's cool. But So, yeah, we owned the sound system and all that. It was fun. And where, where was that? At a theater? Or Davenport. Just... They would do it at hotels usually. So we do it at the Red Lion at the Davenport. A lot of them are at the Davenport. Wow. And it would be part of the, they'd do a tour and then we'd do this, we'd, a lot of music. It was so fun. We'd make it a musical. My brother was even in one. Really? Yeah. Did you write the, like, have uh-huh. somebody write original songs or you wrote the songs? Oh, no, no, no. I didn't. No, we, we used songs that were. Just um, pulled from others. Okay. Yeah. Just like songs, you okay. know? Yeah. How cool. It was fun. It was a good time. It was and, a lot of work, but it was fun. So what year did you move to Spokane? Because you've been here for how long? Uh, 98, I moved back. I was here in the early 90s for a little bit, and okay. then I came back. Okay. Yeah. And is that when you came back is when you got started on radio? Yep. I came back summer of 98 to do uh, MAME with my parents at uh, Coeur d'Alene Summer Theater. And then that October, I did a play at Inner Players, what used to be Inner Players, mm-hmm. called Absent Friends. And then I got the job with the Breakfast Boys, Dave and Ken, in December of 98. Wow. And then in the March of 99, they uh, it was then the Breakfast Boys and Molly. And then it sort of incarnated, and I've been in the building ever since. Dave, Ken, and Molly in the morning. Mm-hmm. For 25 years. Five years. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. If you were ever in Spokane, turn on <laughs> 92.9 in the morning. And you will hear them. They're wonderful. They're kind of a local institution, frankly. Yeah. We do what we can. 
<laughs> you, s- you serve. We serve the people, but we are a blessing, Steve. Remember <laughs> exactly. that. Exactly. We're a blessing. Exactly. Well, I think I think we've done a, a great... Molly's going to come back. Molly will be here at other times. We might even catch her on the fly, because uh, due to technology, we can do that. She could be at the casino, maybe, <gasps> even. Oh, my God. That could be if cool. If I must. If um, I must. I would like to thank Clark Hannigan, my producer, who did a bang-up job on these notes. Yes, he did. Thank you for the phone calls, too, Clark. I appreciate that, reminding me when to be here and all that. Exactly. Very good. Uh, (laughs) I had questions, but I don't think... Well, there's one I'm scared to ask, so I won't ask Do it! One... (laughs) What's one? This 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 is Clark. These are Clark's lightning round questions. Oh boy! Okay. So, Good. One word to describe working with Steve on a screenplay. <laughs> blessing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I am blessed to hear. <laughs> okay. Here's one. Here's one. I like this. If you could play any character in a movie, past or present. Who would it be? What What is that dream? Mommy role? dearest, one hundred percent, mommy dearest. Really? Oh, Christina, eat your meat. <laughs> <laughs> I might as well have Warner Brothers tattooed right here on my backside. Oh. I would love to play mommy dearest. Oh my god, I love that movie. Have you ever seen the movie? I've never seen it. <gasps> Steve, I know the character, a but treat. Oh, treat yourself. Our whole family has imitations. <laughs> Or, yeah, I would like to, I think I would like to do that. I can't think of anything else that stands out so much. Yeah. You know, that you don't have to sing or dance to do. Oh, I love it. I did love being Marty in Greece. I did the play. I would have loved to be, have been Marty in Greece because she didn't have to sing in the movie. Gotcha. I'm not so much a singer, so. But you can sing. I can play the flute, too. As you're going to find out this. Hey, next time I come on, I'll play the flute for you. Yes, please okay. do. Molly will be in the Ellen Travolta <laughs> Christmas show at the Coeur d'Alene Resort. Uh, if you hear this before then, get your tickets. Mm-hmm. And she will be performing with her flute. Yes, I will. Um, which has not seen any action in a <laughs> Careful. <laughs> any... I've played many flutes since then. <laughs> She's not, not and no one's green com- sleeves. Nobody's complained. Nobody's yet. complained. Um, I dusted that bad boy off. I've been taking lessons. <laughs> Awesome. Good job. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you all for listening. Molly, thank you for being here. And pray hands, (laughs) pray hands. And we will do this again. Okay. So, the Stephen James Wiley Show, everybody. Thank you. God bless. And bless you, Molly. And bless you, Stephen. Thank you. (laughs) 